I dare you to make the same game in 3D, but now the circles are rolling hedgehogs that you need to dodge or hop over. I challenge you to make it in one week. Oh, come on. I'm not gonna make a completely different game just because of <laughs> one YouTube comment. Can you do it? Oh, okay, that's it. Ah, oh, here we go again. So I might have ended up making an even crazier version of my one day game. Now in 3D with a full blown editor and much more in just 7 days. <sighs> what am I doing with my life? As usual we have to create a new Unity project and add a capsule, in technical terms also known as a B. I need something that mostly resembles the original game, but in 3D. I think I got it. I'll just remake the same game for a fourth time, but with hedgehogs instead of circles. And on top of that, I'll have the camera move forward and have obstacles coming towards you, similar to the walls in Beat Saber. Ok, I'll start by writing a movement script for the player. And by writing I mean... And now we do the same thing for the enemy. And just like that, we have a game that roughly resembles my one day game. Next I'm gonna turn this cube into an adorable little hedgehog. He's looking kinda sus though, not gonna lie. Like he's gonna beat your wife and f your f I don't want the player to accidentally touch obstacles from the side and die, but I can't really seem to stop him from going inside walls using box gliders. So that means it's time for physics. Let's have a look. Oh, not that. But now it's time for the hard part, and that is syncing the obstacles to the beat. For that, I'll need a system that can support variable BPMs via timing points. Just round the current timing point to the closest object to multiply its position in time with the current track time by multiplying the DSP. Hey, I hate to tell you that, but nobody cares, so shut up. One important aspect of this challenge is to have different themes for the levels. I'm gonna start with the Icy Lake theme, and I think I have the perfect asset pack for this. This Viking asset pack from Polygon should be just what I need. Hey, this is looking pretty decent, but you know how it could look even better. Post processing. See guys? This is why she wears makeup. Next we have the lava part, which is gonna look like a lava river inside the volcano. Sadly I don't have an asset pack for this, but I think I can repurpose this ice level by changing the textures a little bit. Um, that's not really what I had in mind. This looks like the aftermath of a crime scene. There we go, much better. I bet you couldn't even tell it's actually the same level. I mean you already knew that cause I told you, but anyway let's move on. And lastly the cloud hopper theme is gonna be set somewhere in the sky. So I made it look like you are in some sort of futuristic scene with very tall buildings and clouds and smoke and uh, well here is the final result. To make each level look more convincing, I wrote a script which changes the skybox and the fog color. And hey, it's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. Well, it's getting kinda late and I'm starting to get really hungry. Might as well grab a snack or something. What? You again? Then I suddenly came up with the idea to add a world bending effect like the one in Animal Crossing or Subway Surfers. But the only problem with that is that... Um, I have absolutely no idea how to do that. And just like that, thanks to this awesome YouTube tutorial, we got this world bending shader for the game. But did you ever stop and think what our world would be like without YouTube? I mean, how would a dumb guy like me ever be able to make all these games? We would be missing out on so many cool challenges and devlogs. Just like you, if you are not subscribed to my channel. And now it's time to add the finishing touches. I'm gonna make the player disintegrate into a thousand pieces on death, using Unity's particle system. Then I added some UI like the main menu and the song select screen that is 100% original and definitely not stolen from some other game. For accessibility, I added a setting called beat spacing which controls how spread apart the patterns are from each other. A bigger number makes reading easier but requires better reaction time. And then I copied the win screen and lose screen from my one day game. This time I figured I should also add a pause screen if you want to you know, pause in the middle of a song. And it's, uh, totally working. After fixing the pause menu, I realized there's still one problem left. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh, this looks like a really hard pattern. Oh. How am I ever gonna dodge that? Well, I wonder what would happen if we pause the game right before that. Now let's unpause and... Oh look, my player just teleported to the cursor position. Now I can totally beat the rest of the game like a pro. To fix this problem, I did a square which you must click if you want to unpause the game. It always remembers the last position before you pause. Okay, with that out of the way, everything should be working perfectly. Now look, I don't wanna spend hours mapping songs like I did last time, so I think this time I'll make my own map editor instead. I mean, how hard could it be? It's f***ing hard. I took some inspiration from the map editor of my favorite rhythm game. And by that, I mean just copy this pretty interface into... Hey, 2007 also called. They want their interface back. Now it's time to code the rest of this. So, uh, see you in a few hours. 
3 days and over 1000 lines of code later and I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Anyway, here it is. You can navigate the song using the mouse wheel or this nice little timeline down here. Up here we have 3 different tabs for all your mapping needs. First we have the compose tab which allows me to place hedgehogs and obstacles by selecting one of the 3 modes here on the left. It's actually pretty fun and easy to use compared to uh, manually entering numbers in the inspector. Just to suffer. There is also a select mode which is supposed to let you select and move already placed objects but in reality it doesn't do anything. I also wanted to add multiple playback speeds so you can play the song at a slower pace. While it does work, it kinda sounds like crap. I tried to make it sound better by using an audio mixer with some pitch shifter effects and to my surprise this actually worked. But it also adds delay to the sound files so... After that I added a timing tab which you can use to change the BPM of a song. But you have to enter BPM values manually. I didn't make a system to detect your BPM based on your tapping. So just use something like the editor from OC if you want to do that. And if you can't do that either then what are you a f bot? Lastly we got a song setup tab from which you can enter all sorts of settings for your song. Now that we have an actual editor it's time to map the songs. But first I need to get some known copyrighted music. You know, I think I'm starting to get why making a successful rhythm game is so hard. I mean, making the game itself... Pfft piece of cake. But my god, finding good rhythm game music that's also not copyrighted is a total pain in the ass. A few hours later... Hey, this song slaps! And it's got a Creative Commons license! Finally, I started mapping my first song. I'm gonna do a revamp version of the song from my one day game. And I think it turned out alright. It's way more playable this time, I swear. Now, before I finish mapping the other two, I want to make a system that allows you to import and export maps made by other people. You know, similar to how we do it in Osu. So to do that, I'm gonna save the songs as external files and have them automatically load whenever you enter the song select screen. I'm also gonna be adding a song create screen so you can make your own songs from scratch. You just gotta import an mp3 file and the song background. But it seems like Unity doesn't have any built-in file explorer that could be used to import files at runtime. Luckily I found this native file browser on GitHub that somebody was kind enough to share. <laughs> Our file browser. You can even share your maps with your friends by sending them as an archive. As for me, I don't have any friends so I'm not gonna be doing that. So I guess there's only one thing left to do now. And there we go, the songs are done! I think overall the game turned out to be really fun and it definitely feels way more polished than the other games. You can download the game for free using the link in the description and you can now create your own maps and share them with your friends, assuming you figure out how to use this dumb editor. Be sure to smash like if you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one! Oh.